difficult to get as much work done as normal in an online class and it's difficult to uh, create the conditions that we need for, for interaction, for communication, for production, the kind of stuff that we typically uh, do in, in a language class. Uh, and so it's kind of a general kind of consensus or general kind of recognition that in order to um, have effective uh, online classes which offer the conditions that we need for language learning, uh, we're going to need to plan for synchronous or face-to-face -face sessions uh, and asynchronous sessions where we're going to have to let students uh, get on with work outside of uh, class without our direct supervision, right? They're going to need to be uh, independent learners. So what I want to show you today are, yes, some practical ideas that you can apply in your classes for uh, developing um, learner independence, but I'd also, uh, I want to look at some principles uh, behind learner independence so that you can plan your, your learner independence uh, more effectively so that, that students are more willing and more able to, to take part in the kind of tasks that we set up. So that's, that's the plan for today. Okay, and so we're talking a lot about learner independence at the moment because of the current situation. But learner independence uh, is not a new thing, I'm sure that you know, and learner independence has always been important for language learning, right? Students need to amass uh, a large quantity of uh, lexical items to build their vocabulary. Um, they need to uh, listen, read, find opportunities to use language outside of the classroom. And quite often, the number of hours that we have in class is simply not enough to be able to do all the things that we need in order to, to help students learn a language, right? So learner independence, um, you know, a certain degree of learner independence has always been possible, uh, always been necessary. It's not just necessary now because of the current situation, but we're talking about it now because we need to think about it more, uh, given that it's more difficult to have communicative classes in online situations, or if we're in some kind of mixed scenario where we have a few of our students in class and uh, they're coming different days of the week, they're going to need to engage in communication outside of class. Okay. Now, a quick look at the research shows that um, independent learners do the following kinds of things. They self-evaluate, they know when they are uh, engaged in effective learning or, or when they're doing things that are not really working out for them. They organize their learning in such a way that they um, are able to find uh, an appropriate place to study and plan uh, the amount of time required to do certain tasks. Uh, they're good independent learners are able to set goals and the best kind of um, independent learners set more challenging goals, uh, which kind of gets them started with, with engaging in language learning activities. They monitor their, their progress towards these goals and they use strategies and techniques in order to um, consciously learn language and practice language, um, rehearse and memorize and, 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 and uh, you know, make, make conscious efforts to, to, to improve their language skills. And when they're having trouble, they're able to speak to their classmates, their friends, their teachers uh, to ask for help, right? However, hello, hello everybody just joining us. However, just because we give students work to do outside of the life class doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be able to do it, they're gonna wanna do it, or they're gonna have the necessary skills to do it effectively. So, uh, guys, I'm gonna ask a quick question in the chat for you. Now, recently I was reading a book about the science of learning, and I'll give you the, the reference to the book in the bibliography at the end, but one of the chapter names caught my attention. It was a book, it's a book about the science of learning, and one of the units, uh, one of the chapters, sorry, one of the chapters is called Why Independent uh, learning is not a good way to become. Now, can you complete that sentence? Can you complete that uh, chapter title for me? Why independent learning is not a good way to become exactly uh, David Brezeño in Mexico. Yeah, why independent learning is not a good way to become an independent learner, right? For all of the reasons that I just mentioned, giving students work to do outside of the class doesn't mean they're necessarily going to develop 
good independent learning skills, right? And so the kind of um, focuses on, on, on the talk today, this, this idea, right? We can't just give students work to do. They require teacher support uh, in order to be able to uh, get started with the tasks, monitor, check their learning and essentially succeed and become good in independent learners. OK, so this is where my idea of the five keys come from. We have an important role as teachers to help set up independent learning tasks in such a way that students are going to really take advantage of them and, and succeed with them. And so these are my five keys for today's session. The first one is purpose. The second one is structure and strategies. The third one is goal setting. The fourth is reflection. And the fifth is decision making. OK, so my basic argument today is that when we are planning for asynchronous work and having students work independently outside of our classes, if we take these five keys, which we're going to look at over the next 45 minutes, into consideration, we're, we're more likely to uh, experience success as teachers in our classes and learners are more likely to become better independent learners and succeed with the tasks that we give them. OK, so that's the plan. Obviously, I'm going to elaborate on these points, but uh, because we're kind of pushed for time, I'm going to elaborate on them as I show you different examples rather than explaining them all now. OK, and we're going to focus on three general areas in terms of activities. So we're going to focus on out of class reading, deliberate vocabulary learning and out of class speaking uh, and writing and that's simply because in my personal opinion these are areas that are particularly appropriate for for independent learning okay so we're going to look at these areas and we're going to talk about the five keys okay so that's the plan uh, i hope uh, everybody's still interested after that little introduction and we have a lot to do so let's get stuck in okay so the first key is purpose and this is probably the one that i need to say the least about and it's the one that we'll probably talk about the least right but as language teachers we should always be able to rationalize or explain why we do certain things in the classroom right we should be able to to explain why we, everything that we do in a lesson we should be able to say why we're doing it and the reasons that we give for the different activities that we do in classes will reflect uh, our own beliefs about language teaching and learning right and so for example if i decide that i'm going to set up a program with macmillan readers right and now you probably know right but readers are literature plays short stories where the language the plots uh, the structure of the text has been simplified or adapted to meet the, the needs of learners at specific levels. If I set up a reader program at my school, that probably tells you that in my view, the driving force behind any language acquisition is comprehension of meaningful language, right? And that when students are engaged in meaningful language use, then much of the language learning process happens automatically and spontaneously, right? And so language learning is much more than just studying rules or lists of vocabulary, right? They need opportunities to use language in meaningful ways, right? So the reason why I set up my readers program is because these are my beliefs about language learning. Maybe it also tells you that in my view, um, students need many, many encounters with pieces of language and with vocabulary in order to really learn them, right? I mean, we can learn the form and meaning in class, but we need to have multiple encounters with language outside of class in order to really get an idea for the use of language, right? So that's why I would set up a reader's program. And uh, it's fine that as a teacher, I can uh, express my rationale for, for doing that. But there seems to be a consensus in the literature that it's important too that students understand why we do certain things in the class. Um, and I'm always reminded of um, David Newnan.